everybody? Okay. So now, when I say I praise Allah, and I'm, I mean praise and thank, because I've already covered that, but I'm being brief in English now. When I say I praise Allah, did I use a noun or a verb? Here's the question. Oh my God, it's a PhD question. Huh? That's a verb, isn't it? If I say we praise Allah, is that a noun or a verb? That's a verb. What tense is it? Past tense, present tense? That's present tense, yes? Okay. When I say praise belongs to Allah, is the word praise a noun or a verb? Is that clear to everybody that praise is a noun? Allah could have used a verb. I mean, in Arabic, you could say, Ahmadullah, I praise Allah. Nahmadullah. Like you hear the khutbah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu. You've heard this before? Right before you go to sleep? Right? So you've heard, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu. So it's a verb. Oh, 10 minutes left. Fantastic. So, Nahmaduhu, we praise him. Ahmaduhu, I praise him. But Allah didn't say I or we. He didn't use the present tense, he actually used a noun. Now the thing I told you very basically was, nouns don't have a tense. There's no past, no present, or no future. But verbs have what? They have tense, they have present. They have present tense, past tense, future tense. Now the thing of it is, here's what makes this beautiful. If I say I praise Allah, then I'm only talking about the present. I said nothing about the past, and I said nothing about the future. If I use the past tense, then I'm not guaranteeing anything about the present or the future. Because a tense has to be one or the other. Has to be one or the other. And by the way, just because I'm praising Allah right now, does it guarantee the next hour or no? No, it's limited, isn't it? It's not permanent. A verb is not permanent. Allah used a noun, and nouns are what? Permanent. Allah's praise is described with permanence. You know what that does? That means I am only praising Allah now. But the praise of Allah has always been there. And I may not be there forever, but the praise of Allah will always be there. The thanks to Allah will always be there. It is not dependent on me. Huge reality in Alhamdulillah is that Alhamdulillah does not depend on me. And that's the second point I want to make about nouns and verbs. Pay attention to this part. But I, I think we can get this across. When you use a verb, somebody needs to do the verb. It's called the subject or the fa'il in Arabic. Somebody needs to do a verb. You can't just go into a conversation and say, fail the test. Who failed the test? You know? You can't just say, disappeared. Who disappeared? Oh, my pen, my pen disappeared. Like, <laughs> you, you see? When you use a verb, you need to have someone who does it. You need a subject. You can't just have a verb by itself. It doesn't make sense. It, cre it creates confusion. But a noun doesn't need someone to do it. A noun doesn't need a subject. A noun is in independent by itself. An apple is an apple. You don't have to say, who ate it? You don't have to do that. It's by itself. You know when Allah uses the word alhamd, He made it independent. It doesn't need anyone. If he used a verb, then it needs someone, doesn't it? It needs someone to do the praise. Either I praise, or you praise, or we praise, but Allah made it independent of a person or a being. It's even more powerful than everything praises Allah, and everyone praises Allah. Because even if everything and everyone was mentioned, then it would still be only the, the ones, everything and everyone right now. But Allah did not want to limit it by time, or by the people who do it. Subhanallah. Allah is not in need of you and me saying Alhamdulillah. We acknowledge, when we say Alhamdulillah, we acknowledge to Allah that Allah is, does not need us, we need Him. That's what we're acknowledging in just the phrase Alhamdulillah. So what have I given you so far? When we say Alhamdulillah, it makes us optimistic. That's the first thing I gave you. When we say Alhamdulillah, now it makes us humble. It makes us realize things don't depend on us, we depend on Allah. You know, Allah doesn't depend on us and He doesn't need us. We're not doing Him a favor by saying Alhamdulillah, we're only doing ourselves a favor by saying Alhamdulillah. And here's the last bit, I think I can make this one happen. Commands, a kind of verb, a special kind of verb is commands. Like for example, 
in Arabic you could say Ihmadullah, praise Allah. Praise Allah. Like if you know, and it could be made as a request to let's pray Maghrib. Or you can tell your child, bring me water. Right? So for example, when I'm home and I tell my daughter, hey, Husna, bring me water. She has two choices. When you give someone a command, there are two choices, right? What are the two choices? Either they do it or they don't do it. So if I give, if I tell Husna, bring me water, she has two choices. Either she will bring me water or she will bring me water. So <laughs> there's two clear choices for her, right? If Allah says to anybody, even if Allah says, praise Allah, what are the two things that will happen? Some people will do it and some people will not do it. And therefore, when you tell someone to do something, the ball is in their court. It depends on them. Maybe they'll do it and maybe they won't. Allah did not talk about praise in a way that depends on us. He didn't put the ball in our court. He said, whether you do it or not, who cares? It's still there. Alhamdulillah, it's still there. It's been there forever, it will be there forever. Human beings will come and go, generations will come and go, this world will come and go, the hamd of Allah will still be there. It's a matter of fact. I think in these last two minutes, I can get this across. I'm gonna squeeze as much as possible in here. And hopefully we can finish the conversation, at least most of it, of Alhamdulillah before we go. I'm at least, just Alhamd, we haven't even got to Lillah yet. Just Alhamd. Maybe a lillah after the salat, okay? But just about one, one last thing about alhamd. There are two kinds of communication the Arab linguist argues. In linguistics and balagha studies, they argue that there are two kinds of communication. It's informative or emotional. Jumla insha'iya, jumla khabariya, they say. Kalam insha'i, kalam khabari. That's technical terms. You don't have to know that, it won't increase your iman or anything. But I'm just, I'll give you the, the, the simple version of that. Either you have speech that is expressing your feelings, or you have speech that is communicating information. Two kinds of speech. Now that sounds really technical and very hard to understand, so let me make it simple for everybody. When I say to some, I sit somebody down and I explain something to them, is that an act of delivering information or is that emotion? When I explain something to someone, information. Inform like for example, as I'm discussing the Fatiha with you, or saying things about Alhamdulillah, this is informative speech. Yes? It's informative speech. We take a break for Maghrib. You are leaving your chair and you're making lots of dua. Ya Allah, I have the front row seat. Let no one take this place. And so, you know, as you, are, as you are sitting there before the salams are said, you're like, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you just, it's kind of. And then you dash back here and you, you know, elbow as many people as you can to get back in your chair. And you see that it's empty. And the first thing that comes out of your mouth is what? Alhamdulillah. Now, at that point, maybe nobody's in the hall yet. You're like, am I on the wrong floor? <laughs> you know? But when you say Alhamdulillah and nobody's even there, are you informing someone about Alhamdulillah? No. At that time, you use the same phrase Alhamdulillah for what? Expressing your emotion. If I'm teaching someone Alhamdulillah, if I'm teaching someone, then I am actually being informative. But if I'm saying it to myself, the same phrase, it can be emotional. You understand the difference? Now, let's talk about this. In the khutbah, when you go to the khutbah at the masjid, the khatib begins, Inna alhamdulillah. You ever heard this? Inna alhamdulillah. What's the first word you heard? Inna. Thank you for being awake. What's the first word you heard? Inna. What does anybody know what inna means? Certainly. For sure. Absolutely. Hamd is for Allah. Absolutely. Hamd is for Allah. Now what's more powerful? Is saying hamd is for Allah more powerful or saying absolutely hamd is for Allah? What sounds more powerful? Absolutely hamd is for Allah. Inna sounds more powerful. And the khatib uses it every Jumu'ah. The question is, how come Allah didn't use it? How come Allah didn't say, Inna alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawmiddin ya? Because it's a very powerful statement. Why not make it more powerful by adding? Inna, after all, you've been listening your whole life, Qur'an is perfect. You can't even add one word. 
You can't even add one word. It's perfect the way it is. So what difference would it make? I could just throw in a little inna. Khatib does it all the time. I could do it too. The only difference is when you use inna in Arabic linguistics, when you use inna, the statement can only be informative. The statement can only be informative. It cannot be what kind of statement? Emotional. Emotional. Now if you don't use inna, your statement could be informative and could be emotional. By not using inna, Allah actually made alhamdulillah a statement we use to tell others. And we, He also made alhamdulillah a statement that we tell ourselves. Subhanallah. The beauty of it is, now it's used in, the, in communicating the feelings of our hearts and also a message we want to give to somebody else, both of them. If inna alhamdulillah is used, then actually technically it's not an expression of one's emotion. It's only meant to talk to somebody else, not to yourself. Subhanallah. And the khatib, obviously, the khatib is not talking to himself first. Who's he talking to? Everybody else. So he says, inna alhamdulillah. I want you guys to remember alhamdulillah. He's telling you, so he uses inna. The point I've been trying to make thus far before our break is that every phrase in the Qur'an, starting with Alhamdulillah, is so perfect the way Allah says it, that no matter what variation you try to come up with, use a verb instead, use inna, use shukr, use madh, you don't get what Allah communicated. You don't get what Allah Azza wa Jal Himself